because you you said it perfectly. She stopped me. She told me to stop you there. So that was good. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the children now. Mm-hmm. The seven, the eight month old, and the twelve year old. Mm-hmm. And you two, are you are are you guys Christians? We are. Yeah. Oh, Baptists. Okay. Because you know I'm from Orlando. I was a, I'm originally from Orlando. I grew up in okay. Florida, in Miami. Okay. Um, so I know most of the people from the states, you know, around that area would be Christians. We are. Now, what? I almost said it the wrong way. <laughs> are these are these biological children? <laughs> so my daughter is, and our son. We had we adopted our son. Okay. So. Um, my daughter, <clears throat> I actually, when I met Brian, uh, my daughter was nine months old when I met him, you know, during those times. Um, and, and we talked for a few months and then um, a few months I went ahead and had him come here to Tampa and we, we, we had a good time. And so that's how we started. And so for two to three years, we were just, we did the long distance relationship thing. Um, and, and my daughter, the day that he came to Tampa, she was nine months old and she was spoiled. She, if someone held her, she would cry. If I left the room, she would cry. And um, being a Christian and 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 a child of God, I picked up I picked up signs and and God sent me a sign that morning and He reached for my daughter and she reached back out for him and she let him help pick her up. And I was just like, that's not like her. Like, I, this is my daughter, like my child. Like, if anybody pick her up or if I leave, she's going to cry. So I left the room to see, see if I was going to hear her cry, and she didn't cry. And I was like, she must like you because that's not Saray. Like, that's not her. So that was my first sign. I was like, wow, like, okay, well, my daughter likes him. So, you know, let me continue to grow to like him. And um, so we did the long distance thing for three years. Like whenever I was booked out of town somewhere, I would, you know, send for him to meet me there. We would meet up in whatever city and state I was going to be in. Um, And then finally, um, we decided to make it official and moved him here. Um, So over the years, he's always wanted to have kids. And I was against it because at this time, my daughter was getting older. um, And I'm like, I'm not starting over because I like I I had my daughter from birth. so with my with my daughter, um, I was in another relationship, and he and I planned to have kids, and so that's how I conceived my daughter. Um, and you know, we did the whole surrogacy thing from from birth, right out the hospital. My daughter came home with us. So you know, I've already had all those experiences of the sleepless nights and the waking up, you know, every two hours. So as she got older, and he wanted to have kids. I didn't want to start over. I'm like, I just don't want to start over. Like that was hell. Um, but getting married, getting a house built. And then I had to, you know, realize I can't be selfish. Like I have to give this man the opportunity because he's now, you know, vowed to spend the rest of his life with me. So it's only right that I do give in. And with our son, we had um, a friend of mine that I've known for many, many years ago. Um, and she was pregnant and she was going to give her baby up for an adoption and she was going to an adoption agency. Um, and she literally came, it was a secret. She, she came to my house right before, um, the day after Thanksgiving, um, to get some dressing and some ham. And she was, you know, I heard her talking to our other friend who was taking her to Colorado to, um, the, the agency she was going to go through, they house you throughout the rest of your pregnancy until you have the baby and she was literally leaving two weeks after that date to go to Colorado um to be housed until she had my son and um she told her friend who I know she was like <clears throat> um she mentioned something about you know after I had the baby and I said you're pregnant and she was like yes and she was like but I'm you know I'm not going to um keep it she said I'm going to give him up for adoption and um I was just like well you know, we, you can, we should talk, you know, cause we're actually looking into having another baby. So we should really talk. And so she was like, are you serious? And I was like, well, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're going to go the natural route again. <clears throat> but I said, you know, if you're already pregnant, you want to get your baby for adoption, we can talk. So we had a long talk and we talked with, uh, with my husband and <clears throat> um, we even met with the, the child's biological father and they came back over here to our house. They like, you know, toured our house and 
talk with us. And that's what I appreciate the most about her. Even though she was giving her her baby for adoption, she still cared about the well-being of her unborn child. She literally did like she brought him here. They looked up, you know, looked at the house, you know, see where he'd be sleeping at and make sure we had room. And, you know, and I've known her for about 15 years. So it wasn't anything personal, but this is her baby. Um, and so probably like about two or three days later, um, she called me and she said, um, Alex, she said, we want you all to adopt the baby. And, um, that's, that's, that's how it came about. And it's so, it's so ironic because people look at our son. Some people say he looks like Brian. <laughs> some people look, like, he looks just like you. He is, he's my son. <laughs> well, you know, that's a wonderful story, Amari. Now, uh, you know, it's it's it, it touches me when 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 you know black people we've always taken care of each other. We really have. Even in the communities, we fed people that we don't even really know in our community. People just really understood how amazing the black community is with each other when things aren't, you know, at, at, concerning in certain certain ways. Whether we're it's about religion about work or lack of and these things have and it's not without the fact that we haven't been trying black people have been trying and doing for like you said years and decades and now the opportunity has come for us to sort of make some um, headway and some decisions about things that we should have probably been doing from a long time ago mm -hmm. and um, and you adopting a child and then having a 12 year old I couldn't I, I couldn't imagine having a 12 year old girl in the house with a same sex couple without her little girlfriends coming over and this is my parents and they, how does that work um, Have you had that? we we've had it like of course uh, a, a child only, you know, a child only um, sees what they're taught. Mm -hmm. And we, since day one, I've always um, taught my child to love all. I don't teach her uh, to see sexuality. I've never taught her to see color. So she doesn't see that. So all she sees is um, she has two dads. Like that's, that's, that's what she sees. And, and now my daughter, she knows who her biological mother is. Um, now that she's gotten older, I even let her go spend the night at her mom's house sometimes. She takes her mom and her phone and everything. So it took years to get to that point because I didn't want to confuse her at an early age. Um, but growing up, it was all about I have two dads. But we did experience the first bit of kind of like um, her getting picked on. I think she was in like the third grade. And um, I was... I, at that point, I was walking to the bus stop. <clears throat> the bus stop was on the corner of our house. And so one day she said, Dad, what's gay? And I said, well, what do you mean, what's gay? She said, because when um, when I got on the school bus, one of the boys said, oh, your dad's gay. So that was when I had to have the first conversation with her in about the third grade about what gay was, um, you know, for her to understand. Um, and she was just like, oh, so he's talking about my daddy? And so, you know, she was, then she was all mad then. Um, but now she's in the sixth grade. Now she's in the middle school. So now um, she has a voice. And so now she's more so a voice of reason. Uh, and I also feel like this is almost 2023. So I, 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 I'm praying my son is going to have it easier because mm -hmm. gay is not the thing like it used to be back in the day. Like, oh, my God, you're gay. Like, oh, my God, you have your doctor. Oh, my God, you have two. So I'm praying when he's her age, it's going to be a thing in the past where he won't have to deal with what she is because like I know in middle school now she just came home probably like two weeks ago and she said that um what did she say about somebody somebody had asked her why does she have two dads um one of her friends <clears throat> asked her why does she have two dads and she was like I said what did you say she said well I told him because I got two dads and a mommy you know, so mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah, you know, that's that's a good answer. You know, you're that just means that you're what? And she said, that means I'm more loved. And I mm -hmm. said, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've never told her, like, even with Brian, I've never, like, told her, like, she doesn't even call him dad. She calls him Brian. But <clears throat> when she introduces him, 
it's always this is my dad's or these are my dad's and and that was completely that's all on her own that's amazing that's amazing you know i'm all right it's it's great when we can teach our children to open up to what um the black community think is norm or what we're taught in the church and we're now realizing that a lot of those things are propaganda or just things that have just been over exaggerated and mm -hmm. people have interpreted the way they want it to be and to make things better for themselves or mm -hmm. to make them more accepted in society but it's good that we're having this pushback now now i want to talk about one more thing about with the family structure here mm -hmm. you and brian um when you go to do you guys go to church we haven't been to church since before the pandemic mm -hmm. yeah but but we okay. yeah we were we were going okay. to church he both of us and our daughter mm -hmm. okay let's talk about you we get the stairs we get the stairs you know they look at us crazy <laughs> no <laughs> I, I i understand you know i you know i understand um let's talk about you now is Mr. Showman, the current reigning Mr. Showman. Now, let's talk about your proudest moment of entering any pageant. Which pageant are you the most proud of? Um, and, the, and they just did 